You're listening to Live Wild Radio, the part-time adventure podcast. Join us as we explore how outdoor adventures build mind, body, and spirit. Welcome back to Live Wild Radio. It's your friendly neighborhood coach, Winston. This is a solo sode because sometimes schedules don't let Catherine and I both do the episode together. But this topic uh, is super timely because we are in the middle of November uh, and that's sort of the kickoff to the holiday season. And one of the keys (laughs) on everyone's fitness journey um, is don't get fat and don't lose your fitness over the holidays. You might not be able to dramatically improve depending on your schedule, but with some of the tips I'm going to talk about today, you can avoid going backwards. Um, Because one of the coolest things you run into is it takes roughly, you know, from like one-sixth to one-eighth of the work to maintain your fitness as it took to build it. Um, So if you think about, uh, you know, your conditioning, you think about your strength, um, if you end up for a period during the holiday, so we'll call that, um, you know, mid-November to the end of December um, as the holiday season, uh, you know, cause we have a lot of American listeners and their American Thanksgiving is coming up shortly. Uh, basically you run into the thing where so many people just completely fall off the wagon and you know, you run into the thing where if you do a few things, um, you can kick off the new year, um, without having gone backwards or maybe even improving a little bit. Um, so some of the simplest things, so first we're, we're going to, uh, do some of the low hanging fruit as far as, um, not getting fat. Um, so the two simplest things, particularly on days where you know, you're going to eat, um, you know, it's those holiday get togethers, uh, maybe you're going to a Christmas party, maybe it's actual Thanksgiving, um, you know, any of those types of events where, uh, you know, you can look on your calendar, you got a thing booked and you know, you're going to eat more, um, uh, or you're going to drink more because calories are calories, right? Um, one of the simplest things that day, uh, is don't eat breakfast, (laughs) you know? Um, even if you don't use intermittent fasting, like cutting down the amount of meals per day you eat, um, uh, one of the simplest things you can do uh, is on those days you're going to eat bigger um, or uh, have bigger specific meals is skip a meal, right? Because let's say, you know, you were normally eat 800 calories per meal. Like we'll do three meals a day. So that's 2,400 calories. Uh, But you're going to have, you know, the Thanksgiving day where you're probably going to start eating, whether it's snacks, the treats, uh, let's say the family gets together at two, right? Um, Well, if you haven't eaten yet, right, that 800-calorie breakfast, you now um, have those 800 calories to eat later in the day, and you run into the thing where, the individual meals that you have um, are more calories. Um, But you run into the thing where your total caloric intake for the day um, might not be actually over what you need um, to maintain your weight. Um, And so one of the simplest things that way uh, is basically just, you know, even if you're not doing this regularly, uh, is don't start eating that day until the events happen. Or let's say you're only doing the big dinner, right? Um, Then basically think about uh, don't eat breakfast, a small lunch, like some salad and protein, 
Um, and this is where my favorite thing comes in. It's bag salads from Costco. <laughs> and then I had like, basically if you want to be, um, fit and you want to either lose body fat or maintain your weight, uh, without getting fatter, uh, one of the simplest uh, lunches I've run into is we get the Costco rotisserie chickens um, and Costco bag salads. And so in a mixing bowl, I just dump the salad in uh, and then take a couple of chicken breasts um, uh, off that uh, chicken or it could be the chicken thighs or whatever, but you know, a fair amount of chicken, like probably 50 grams of protein. Um, and I just cut it up, mix it in with the salad, boom, a lot of volume of food that isn't very calorically dense. Um, and you'll, because there's a lot of fiber, a lot of protein, you'll be full for quite a while. Um, you know, with a, you know, 600 calorie lunch. Um, so then if you've not eaten breakfast, salad and protein for lunch, then when you hit that meal in the evening, uh, you know, say six o'clock, uh, when the family's all sitting down for the turkey and the mashed potatoes and the pumpkin pie and, uh, the apple pie and the blueberry pie and the, you know, all of the different pie, <laughs> um, and you've had some cookies and maybe you've had a couple of beer or a couple of glasses of wine, um, you know, you're not putting yourself into a massive caloric surplus. So it, it's such a simple little trick. Um, it's just because people don't tend to follow it, <laughs> you know, or even think of it. Um, but it, it's being preemptive. Um, so that's number one. Number two is each time you eat, um, and this is something I recommend to people anyway, year round, but particularly in the holidays when you'll tend to be eating more, uh, is go for a 10 minute walk after you eat, uh, does amazing things for regulating your blood sugar. Um, and, uh, basically improves digestion, blah, 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 blah a bunch of benefits. Um, uh, but by moderating blood sugar, you're going to decrease, uh, body fat storage. Um, because excess blood sugar, um, will either go into empty muscles, uh, which come from, you know, vigorous training or, uh, they will be stored as excess body fat. Um, so, uh, one of the other tricks I do, and this works really well because we've got a home gym, um, is I will actually do, uh, a workout earlier in the day. Um, that actually depletes my muscles. So get up in the morning, you haven't eaten since dinner the night before, uh, and basically, uh, a full body workout, I'll do a circuit. So I'll do double kettlebell front squats. I'll do body rows or pull-ups, uh, overhead presses or push-ups, um, kettlebell swings or kettlebell snatches, uh, maybe throw in an ab exercise like the ab wheel or, or some loaded carries. And I'll just rotate between those exercises. I'll push the sets, um, not right to failure, but close to failure. Uh, so that you're getting, uh, a pump, um, you know, using basically the parameters that are optimal for building muscle. Um, also tend to deplete the muscles of muscle glycogen, right? Which primes them to suck up nutrients when you take them in. Um, so basically, uh, very similar to the workout I did this morning. Um, I will do about five sets of each movement, um, but I'll do it as a circuit. So rather than do five sets of one exercise and go to the next, with relatively shorter rest periods. So instead of like three minute rest between sets, I'll take a minute between sets, but I'll alternate an upper body and a lower body, upper body, lower body. Um, and each of those sets, um, I'll push it till those last few reps are really hard. Um, aiming for anywhere from like 
8 to 15 reps per set, depending on what type of exercise it is. You're going to get your heart rate up. You're going to deplete a, bl- a lot of muscle glycogen, the sugars that are stored in uh, muscles to fuel activity. Um, you're going to get a bit of a burn in the muscles. You're going to get a pump. Um, and you're creating the environment that the muscles now are primed to suck up nutrients, right? If you are eating a lot when you're fully fresh, you're fully recovered, the muscles are full, uh, you know, then you're much more likely to store any excess calories, uh, particularly carbohydrate, as body fat. Um, so if you get up in the morning, um, and it, obviously if, say it's a day off, you're going to meet the family at two. At some point before two, do that type of workout. Um, don't eat breakfast. Then when you get to uh, your event, <laughs> you know, the family get together, or the Christmas party, whatever, um, you know, make sure that you're trying to bias protein, um, which if you think of it, like if you fill half of your plate uh, with turkey, um, uh, that does a good job of giving you a good amount of protein because um, without excess fat. Uh, you know, and obviously having some mashed potatoes and some vegetables and some stuffing, the, those carb sources, well, you're going to run into the thing where your muscles are just saying, you know, feed me, uh, because you've created that environment where there's a deficit within the muscles themselves. They want to suck up protein. They want to suck up, uh, carbohydrate to replenish what you've burned, um, so having, you know, created that environment, now any excess calories you've consumed now are really uh, going to be biased towards storing within the muscles rather than storing as body fat. Um, so such a simple, simple approach. Uh, do a workout that depletes you, um, you know, basically, which is essentially bodybuilding, (laughs) Um, then don't eat breakfast, bias your food towards protein, um, and then once you do eat, um, go for a walk, a 10-minute walk after each meal. Um, You know, think of it as like after lunch and then after dinner, um, go for a 10-minute walk. Um, And you will be blown away uh, you know, if, if on each of your overeating days, um, and let's say there's six of them, you know, between, uh, you know, Thanksgiving, American Thanksgiving, Black Friday time, uh, and New Year's Eve, um, let's say there's six of those days. Um, if you approached each of them this way, uh, you will dramatically decrease your odds of gaining excess body fat um, during the holidays. Just that alone. Um, And then, you know, uh, and I've talked about this in episodes before, because building muscle is so important, um, uh, as we age in particular, um, you know, muscle is going to add to both your longevity and your quality of life because it having some extra muscle will have a lot of metabolic benefits. Um, and you know, bigger muscles have the potential for more strength and more performance. So you run into the thing where, um, by making December and January, uh, muscle building time, you know, and, uh, those guidelines come in, you know, Each muscle group uh, should be getting 6 to 12 sets, like hard sets per week. Um, You know, we kind of bias it between 8 to 15 reps per set. Uh, Take your sets, um, uh, you know, at or close to muscular failure, which is the point you can't do another rep. Um, Certain exercises, obviously, are safer to do this with, so... um, you know, 
if you're doing like a barbell deadlift, a barbell squat, take those within a couple reps where your last few reps are hard. Um, uh, you know, they're kind of a struggle to get done, but leave one or two in the tank for safety purposes because you don't want to get pinned. Same thing doing a barbell bench press without a spotter. <laughs> you don't want to take that to failure. Um, uh, whereas if you were doing push-ups, um, taking push-ups to failure, you're not going to hurt yourself, right? You know, you lower down on that last one and push and it doesn't go anywhere. Well, then put your knees down on the floor and get up, <laughs> you know, um, same thing with, <coughs> excuse me, same thing with pull-ups, uh, same thing with body rows. Uh, you know, um, I would watch, like I push my overhead pressing hard, but the last thing you want is to have a fairly heavy kettlebell, you know, or a barbell, but, uh, particularly the kettlebells cause there's the stability aspect or dumbbells, um, part way overhead and you lose control of it cause your muscles give out. So I push those hard, but not rate to failure. Um, uh, and same thing with leg work. Um, one of the things I'll do is like double kettlebell front squats, um, to the point where I can barely keep the weight up, but your legs aren't going to give out yet. So, um, if I do say a set of 10 double kettlebell front squats, um, because the weight is also gripped, um, and held in the rack position, um, What's going to give out first is your arms holding the weight before your legs do. So then I'll do the thing of, uh, you know, do a set and then, you know, put the weight down um, before I'm dropping them, <laughs> um, before the arms give out, you know, one or two reps before the arms give out. Like you can always feel that. Um, and the same would go with a goblet squat. Um, goblet squat's a little easier to hold because you've got both hands on one kettlebell and it's usually less weight. Uh, and then I will immediately go into alternating rear stepping lunges, uh, with no weight, um, just to burn out the legs. Um, and same kind of thing goes with, uh, say kettlebell swings, um, they're not one you want to take to failure. Um, so the way that I'll increase is like I'll do a set of, excuse me, uh, 10 or 15 swings, put the weight down, and then grab a pair of kettlebells and then do a set of like, uh, you know, 10 to 15 Romanian deadlifts, which are the same movement pattern, but it's slow and controlled. Um, so you've fired up the muscles with an explosive movement and then you kind of burn them out, uh, you know, add further metabolic stress on the muscles with a slower movement, a slower controlled movement. Um, anytime you pause in the stretched position, um, and that's where things like the Romanian deadlift, uh, the bottom is the stretched position. So if you pause there, um, you can make a lighter weight seem a lot heavier because you pause, you're not getting any bounce and then you squeeze back up. And when I say pause, it's like, you know, a full one Mississippi, um, same thing, the bottom of a squat, pause, the bottom of a push up, pause, um, uh, a pull up, um, pause at the bottom, like full extension, you know, so there's no momentum. Um, and one of the things that, that, uh, the research has shown, um, is that increasing the tension in the stretched position, um, will, uh, promote more muscle growth. And, you know, uh, basically anybody who sort of back in the day, you know, or even now, um, has done some bodybuilding. You've heard of bulking and cutting. Well, obviously if during the holiday season, you're naturally going to consume more calories, um, a caloric surplus, uh, 
Well, that's what you would do during a bulk, right? Eat a little bit more calories and train to build muscle. So if you're naturally going to do it anyway, we're going to bias our training towards muscle building because you're having like an inadvertent bulk. (laughs) You weren't doing it on purpose, but because we know people eat more during the holidays, um, you know, if you are creating the stimulus that is going to build muscle, um, you can definitely optimize it so you're not gaining uh, a ton of body fat from those excess calories. So uh, hopefully, you know, you sort of wrap your head around those key little points, you know, make use of intermittent fasting. And you can do that all season, like all uh, holiday season. It doesn't just have to be on your big eating days. And you could even come out of the holidays having lost a little bit of body fat. Um, uh, and then one of the other ones is try to get more walking in. Um, you know, walking is so underrated. Like get a set of trekking poles like we would use hiking. And if you can get past the fact that you look a little funny in your neighborhood, um, uh, you know, and I guess I run into the thing I have no issue with it because, like, I'll go drag a goddamn tire around my neighborhood, um, put my harness on, and I'm dragging a car tire behind me. So I'm not really concerned <laughs> with what my neighbors think, um, uh, you know. Uh, and quite honestly, the times that people have asked me, you know, uh, when I'm out dragging the tire, they're like, oh, like, are, are you training for something? <laughs> you know, like, they're not like, oh, you're so weird. You know, even if they did, I wouldn't care. But, but you know, I'll get people asking questions about it. Um, and when I explain, explain all the benefits of tire dragging, and it's like, it's really cheap because you get the tire for free and it takes very little hardware to drag a tire. Um, they're like, oh, maybe I should drag a tire. You know, a lot of people don't do it, but... You know, they actually see the benefit um, of training, um, you know, and, and they're being exposed to something maybe they, they weren't quite aware of. Because it basically, tire dragging is just walking on steroids. Um, so, uh, you know, adding the trekking poles, you tend to walk a little quicker. Uh, which naturally will drive your heart rate up a bit more so you get a better cardio benefit out of it. Um, And uh, you'll run into the thing where adding the upper body movement, the more muscles you use in an activity, the more cardiovascular um, demand there is. So um, this is why uh, basically cross-country skiing will have a higher heart rate than running will because one is using all four limbs um, with load. Uh, The other is just using the lower body. Um, So if you can add in some upper body, um, you can get a really good cardiovascular benefit from walking. Like just normal walking, even a fast, you know, um, I'm going to be late <laughs> kind of pace. Uh, what I'll run into is, is it'll elevate my heart rate, but not into the, the training zone I want. Right. If you're brand new, you know, you're coming off the couch, you're coming out of the office. Um, you know, training is new to you. Then just walking alone for a sustained period of time, like 30 to 60 minutes a session can elevate your heart rate enough to get a cardiovascular benefit. But you will run into the thing over time as you get fitter, uh, you are not going to get as much uh, cardiovascular benefit, you know, or or as high of a heart rate uh, as you would when you started because you're fitter. So you have to either go faster, add the upper body into it with the poles, add resistance like carrying a, a backpack or a weight vest. Um, just like lifting weights at a certain point, the weight that was hard in the beginning becomes easy. Um, the same thing goes with your cardiovascular work. You either have to move faster, um, uh, to get your heart rate up to the same level. Um, and you know, for the average person, what we're looking at is like a heart rate of 120 to 140, you know, is sort of that sweet spot for sustained cardio work. 
Um, and one of the issues, uh, say with walking, um, unencumbered, so no pack, no poles, no tire, is at a certain point to get the heart rate up, then it's got to transition to jogging, um, or running. Um, and the issue for a lot of people is when you make that switch, um, it beats the fuck out of you, <laughs> especially running on sidewalks and pavement. Um, so generally for, for the average person, um, who's not looking to be a runner, um, you know, especially if you're over 40, I'm looking at the idea, if we can, uh, increase the demand without increasing the impact, um, that is going to be better for you long term. Um, so that's why, like, I don't like to run. Um, uh, I'll do some trail running. Um, but, <coughs> hmm. uh, but the, you know, just sort of repetitious going for a run on a hard surface, um, even with good shoes and all that kind of jazz, uh, there, there is a toll it takes on your joints. Um, and being that, uh, joints don't regenerate so good <laughs> as you get older, um, we will minimize that. Um, and that's where hiking is great. Uh, you know, but if you don't live in an area with great hiking trails that have some ups and downs and, uh, what have you, then, uh, this is where sort of going in that neighborhood walk, um, or even walking on a treadmill, you know, uh, basically one thing that's nice if you are using a treadmill for your walking, um, is elevation. You can change the angle it's on. The key is just get your heart rate, you know, uh, up between 120 and 140 for 30 to 60 minutes, at least three times a week. Um, you know, but ideally I want to see basically you elevate your heart rate somehow every day. Uh, doesn't have to be the same thing. Um, but it was one of those things where we're meant to, uh, or our body responds best to frequent doses. Um, they don't have to be super hard, but frequent doses. Um, and that's where, uh, for a lot of people, you know, if you get three walks and then three kettlebell conditioning workouts, um, and I call it kettlebell conditioning workouts, but it's just kettlebell swings, um, 10 to 20 minutes of a kettlebell EMOM. So you do 10 swings every minute on the minute for 10 to 20 minutes. Um, uh, that I find does wonders for people's conditioning as well. So if you have three days a week of 30 to 60 minutes and then three days a week of 10 to 20 minutes of kettlebell swings, start at 10 minutes of it. And then once like every week at one minute. So the next week is 11 and then 12 up to 20. Um, and you can even go up to 30. Um, for a lot of people, I think, 20 is about the limit, not for the physicality, but just mentally just doing the same thing, uh, you know, but put a podcast on, put some music on, um, you know, set that timer, like, uh, an interval timer that you can put on your phone, um, is one of the greatest tools you'll run into for training, um, because it just keeps you on the clock, right? Go, go, go. Uh, you know, and it's like 10 swings takes about 15 seconds, so you'll bang off your 10 swings, put the kettlebell down, just sort of walk around, you know, in place, you know, bounce around on your toes, stretch a little, whatever, for 45 seconds, and you just repeat that. Uh, and magic shit happens. You basically, from a conditioning standpoint, you get your various types of sustained cardio, and you can do it on a bike too. Like your sustained cardio can be walking, it could, you know, if you're healthy enough for it, if you can run, um, you know, like I said, I'm not a huge fan from the impact standpoint, but you know, there's no denying the cardiovascular benefits. Um, 
tire dragging, hiking with poles, rock marching, which is basically just wearing a weight vest or, or a backpack, um, you know, with some weight in it. You do that three times a week. You do your swings three times a week. Um, you add in your, uh, you know, if you've got an exercise bike, um, if you've got a rowing machine, the key, it doesn't matter your modality specifically, it's just getting in a rhythmic uh, activity, like rhythmic repeatable activity, you know, walking, running, cycling, skiing, uh, rowing, they all sort of fall into that category. Um, get your heart rate up to 120 to 140 uh, for 30 to 60 minutes, um, three times a week, and get your uh, uh, kettlebell swings in three times a week. Um, you will do amazing things both for your health. It burns a lot of calories. It's really effective for just having energy. Like you don't get out of breath going up the stairs. Um, you know, you run into the thing where you're just in better shape, right? And then your strength workouts bias them for December and January towards those parameters for muscle building. Um, and it's fun. Um, quite honestly, like, uh, maybe, maybe it's just the, you know, I started lifting weights when I was 12 doing workouts out of bodybuilding magazines cause we didn't know any better back then. <laughs> you know, it wasn't the best way to train for, um, you know, optimal athletic performance, uh, you know, but it, I'll tell you, um, you know, doing like three to five sets of, you know, eight to, to 15 reps, you know, and there's nothing magic about just that rep range, but, uh, it's not like it is the only way, the only reps that'll build muscle. But what I find is that when the reps are a lot higher, um, you're getting such a burn and that it's hard to know, are you just tired or are you actually close to failure? Um, and then ones that are lower, uh, you know, because doing sets of five to eight will also build muscle, but you need so much heavier weight, uh, you know, for, for sets in that range that you're much more likely, uh, to get hurt because, as you're getting fatigued, if you, uh, you know, bumble your form a little bit, you get out of the groove with a heavier load, that's where people get hurt. So, um, not that you can't build muscle at these other rep ranges, higher and lower, but that kind of eight to 15 is kind of a nice sweet spot for it's enough to accumulate, uh, um, a good amount of volume, um, a, uh, area where, you know, um, it's easier to see how close you are to failure, to feel it. Um, you know, and we know we want to go within a few reps of failure to optimize muscle growth. Uh, and then, uh, you're using a lighter weight than you would for the lower rep ranges, um, which decrease your chance of injury. Right. So that's why that's kind of that sweet spot for muscle building. Um, yeah. So you basically just follow those simple, simple, uh, guidelines, right. Um, over the next six weeks and you're going to run into the thing where you were less likely to come out of, you know, the holiday season fatter because a lot of people, you know, um, are gaining weight every year. Uh, and a lot of that weight comes this time of year, right? Because the mood, uh, you know, uh, you're not as motivated. You're wearing lots of clothes. You're not going to the beach, <laughs> you know, um, uh, you know, so you're covered up. So you're not as aware of your fluffiness. Um, but then you run into like, it's dark all the time. It's cold. I just want to kind of hibernate. Um, you know, that all factors in, uh, and then it's just holidays, right? Like these are, man, it's been a, a year who I'm going to enjoy myself. 
right? And the key comes in is you know you're going to do it. So a little bit of strategy around it. Um, and, you know, and this is why, like, I'm such a proponent of people, even if you have a gym membership, have a bit of shit at home. Uh, you know, even if like one or two adjustable kettlebells, uh, shout out to Bells of Steel. Um, we don't have a promo code from them, but it's a product I highly recommend. Um, you know, they're a Canadian company, uh, but they do adjustable kettlebells. So if you had two of those, right. So that eventually when you work up to doing double kettlebell, um, you're able to do double kettlebell clean and press and double kettlebell front squats. Um, uh, but even just one, because they go from like 12 kilo to 32 kilo. And I think the way they come, it's like a half kilo increment. So like you could just one pound at a time, um, from 26 pounds up to 70 pounds. And with most of these movements, you get to the point where you're doing, you know, presses and snatches and swings and all of these with like a 32 kilo or 70 pound kettlebell, you're strong enough, um, you know, because it just comes in as like, unless you're specifically a strength athlete um, or, you know, doing anything specifically to be uh, a uh, competitor, um, most applications and most things we do in life, uh, that tool will get you strong enough, um, to, to look good, feel good and live a very long, healthy life. Um, you know, cause with anything, there is a point where enough's enough. Um, just most people aren't there yet. <laughs> um, you know, usually when you get to the point where you can do sets of 10 of anything with the 70 pound kettlebell, um, any of the kettlebell movements, then let's just work on your conditioning some more. Let's work on your pull-ups. Let's work on, you know, other stuff to work on. Don't get me wrong. It's not like there's ever this, you know, good enough, like you're uh, never done working. But being able to go up to a 34 kilo or 36 kilo, uh, you know, if you want to do it, go nuts. But But if the goal is feeling good, looking good, longevity, um, you know, becoming strong man strong, um, uh, there's no real benefit to it. And, and the type of work you have to do to become that much stronger also increases your risk of injury. Um, you know, so we're always playing a balancing act with all of these things. So yeah, uh, put these things into effect over the next six weeks. Uh, and just put them into effect, period. Um, <laughs> you know, uh, if your goal is to lose body fat, um, you know, you're going to run into the thing of some extra activity, fewer calories, lots of protein, build your muscles. It's not rocket science. Um, the key to it is not like, it, it's not like we don't understand how to do it. Um, in a very clear, this will work every time. Um, the issue everybody is running into is doing it consistently long enough to achieve the results they want. Like there, there is no magic formula, um, other than consistent work, the consistent, you know, if you need to lose weight, you have to consistently be in a caloric deficit if you want to build muscle, you have to consistently stimulate to create a, um, you know, positive nitrogen synthesis. <laughs> you have to consume enough protein um, that you have the building blocks for those muscles. Uh, and if you do these things, you will get leaner uh, and stronger and fitter. But it doesn't happen in six weeks, right? It doesn't happen in a 30-day challenge. Um, it's a, you know, think of it as like getting a degree. <laughs> if you want to make like life-changing process, think of it as four years. Um, you know, 
where you just, you got to do your homework. <laughs> you got to do the projects. You got to put the work in. Um, you know, because most people who are overweight, uh, or and forget overweight, over fat, um, you know, that's really what we're talking about. Nobody who has abs but is, uh, you know, slightly heavier than the chart said that they should be, um, uh, is complaining about their weight, right? Um, it's people who, you know, and I've been there, uh, people have more fat than they want. Um, you know, uh, basically it's one of those things. It's very hard to get to the point where you're so overweight with muscle that it's going to blow out your knees, (laughs) um, without, you know, uh, copious buckets of steroids injected into your butt, just so you know. Um, never worry about, you know, any of the women who are listening, um, who, you know, are like, ah, but I don't want big muscles. Without steroids, you can't get big muscles anyway. Um, you know, you can't get bulky. You're going to get way bulkier from being over fat than you are from being over muscled. Okay. So, uh, that is going to be the end of today. These are tips that you can actually put into effect. Very simple, very straightforward. Um, and, uh, please let us know, like reach out, uh, on Instagram or on the Facebook or go to our website, livewildradio.com. Um, and let us know, uh, how things are working for you. Or if you got questions about what you've just heard, we're always happy to answer people's questions. Um, we want this to be a dialogue where, where, you know, the information we're conveying, uh, if there's anything people don't understand, I want them to understand it. And I'm, you know, I think I'm <laughs> explaining things in a way that's pretty clear. Um, but you know, if you're new to this, you might run into that thing where it's all kind of like alien. So we're, we're happy to go more in depth, uh, or more specific or even more basic. So yes, until next time, I'm, uh, Winston, uh, you know, my dear Catherine, uh, is off at work today. Um, and, uh, just remember, uh, work hard and play dirty. <laughs>